You're listening to Food for Thought, a Food Unfolded podcast. Maybe we can just start with a little bit about who you are, Charles, and explain your background for our audience. Sure. Thanks a lot for uh, for the invitation to to speak about this topic. I'm I'm very passionate about. Uh, my name is Charles. Uh, I work for IDH, the Sustainable Trade Initiative. Uh, that is a, an organization based in the Netherlands. That is such as the name says, uh, focusing on sustainable trade. Uh, and I work more specifically as program manager for Beyond Chocolate. And so that is the, the Belgian Sustainable Chocolate Initiative uh, that brings together uh, all stakeholders in the industry to uh, to really move towards ambition, ambitious targets in terms of sustainability. Uh, my background was not in cocoa and chocolate uh, for the whole of my career. Uh, mm-hmm. So I've worked uh, for a couple of years in Belgium for WWF, uh, working specifically on the on the topic of imported deforestation. Uh, then I moved to fair trade in Belgium, uh, where they pushed me into cocoa and chocolate, uh, which uh, honestly was probably the best move in my career until now. Um, and that gave me the opportunity after a couple of years to move as program manager for Beyond Chocolate. So, yeah, today what we're really going to discuss, Charles, is the problems with the cocoa industry today and what is being done about it, um, especially given your introduction and the project that you're working on. I thought that it would be really good to have this discussion with you. Um, so just diving straight into it. I wanted to briefly talk about the history of cocoa. Um, like, how did we get here? What are some of the biggest problems that are happening within the cocoa industry um, or the chocolate industry um, for consumers that maybe aren't so familiar with cocoa? <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I think it's a it's a very vast question, and and there's a lot of different elements that we could bring here. And 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 first of all, let me start by being clear: I'm not a historian, um, but I'm I'm passionate about the the topic of cocoa and mm. and the work that needs to be done uh, on supply chains. To be clear, and I think that is very well known. Uh, there is definitely an uh, an urgency uh, for the sector to to really move towards uh, towards better trade and trade that benefits uh, the people and the planet. Uh, that's what we are talking about uh, about today. But now, how did we get there? Um, I think maybe the the easy answer to this would be our addiction to chocolate. Uh, and that started a long time ago. Um, actually, uh, cocoa and chocolate appeared on, on the European continent already uh, in the 1600s. So we're talking about a couple of centuries ago. And, and mm-hmm. so it came to Belgium uh, that was under Spanish occupation uh, and it came from uh, from Latin America. And so that's when we uh, we discovered uh, cocoa and hot chocolate and, and there a whole culture of chocolate actually uh, started developing and, and so I'm sure you you know and and most of the audience will know that Belgium likes to define itself as a chocolate country you know we have mm. the biggest chocolate factory uh, I think I can claim that Belgium invented the pralines also in uh, early of last century right in Brussels uh, if you walk around in Brussels you'll see that one out of two shops almost uh, figure or speak, of course, but is uh, is selling chocolate. Yeah, well, it's... I I think it's not so much a figure of speech. I've seen it <laughs> around the Grand Place. It's yeah, uh, yeah. almost all chocolate, and so we're very passionate about that. And I think that that also through uh, through the years, there's a real craftsmanship that was developed, and and so there's really this culture of chocolate. And I was uh, also educated in in a family where. You know, we give chocolate to each other on special occasions. Okay, you've got flowers, but the next one is flowers and chocolate, right? We do agree on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I think there's there's a big fascination for the product and thus also uh, a big demand. Uh, now, what we haven't seen enough uh, in the in the last uh, years and, and probably generations is having that same uh, love and respect in our in our culture of chocolate translated through the whole supply chain, and so that results today in in indeed um, in indeed a couple of important challenges uh, in the sector. And and here I must say also I prefer to uh, to use the word challenges and not problems because to me mm-hmm. chocolate is not a problem. Uh, actually, it's probably part of the solution. 
uh, and I think that if we can um, if we can really transform our supply chains and again uh, share the benefits of this product that everyone is so fascinated about, I think we can really have a powerful tool uh, for the good. Um, but then we need to to make sure that that indeed we we create and support this transition. Hmm. So then, what are some of the biggest challenges within the cocoa industry today? Um, definitely, and and that's also the essence of uh, of the Beyond Chocolate partnership is that we have an agreement on on the big the big challenges or the big topics that we want to address together uh, as stakeholders in in this sector. Um, and there's actually uh, I'll try to keep it simple because of course there's many things to talk about, but I, I would. I would raise four challenges and, and probably in order of importance. Uh, the first one is, uh, is the challenge of, of poverty or even extreme poverty. Uh, and so here with Beyond Chocolate, uh, the outspoken ambition is to, to ensure that producers on the long term uh, can earn a living income. Uh, living income is one that is sufficient to cover all your basic needs, uh, food, education, transport, health, etc. Today, that gap between the actual level of income and what would be a living income uh, in in uh, in the two biggest cocoa producing countries, Côte uh, d'Ivoire and Ghana, is huge. Uh, today, according to several studies, producers earn less than one euro a day or even less than 70 cents a day. Of course, life is cheaper in Côte d'Ivoire. But let's be honest, also with 70 cents a day, there's not much room uh, for investment. And so... Um, that to me is really the, the the biggest challenge that we face uh, in this supply chain, and and actually it's not much different from um, from other commodities that 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 you might also cover in 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 other stories. Mm -hmm. um, but here again, I believe that we with chocolate we have a product that that can help to to make a real move forward. So challenge one, definitely breaking this poverty trap, because the mm -hmm. poverty trap to me. Uh, is at the root of all the other challenges that we have in cocoa. And the two next ones uh, would be uh, deforestation uh, and child labor. Uh, deforestation, if you, if you look at the numbers, and I, I don't want to become the statistician here, but uh, if you look at, 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 just Google a couple of satellite maps. Uh, there's, there's been great work done by, by a couple of NGOs to, to see the impact on forests of our, of our consumption patterns. Um, and there in, in, again, these two countries, Côte d'Ivoire and Ghana, um, they lost a huge part of their forest coverage. And when I say huge, I talk about more than 80 or 90% uh, since their independence. Uh, so it is important. It is that important that today we actually need to start talking about reforestation. Um, and so I'm not saying it's all cocoa, uh, but for those two countries, cocoa definitely has been a driver of deforestation. Child labor is another issue that is widely spread across agricultural commodities, but it, that is also relevant um, in the cocoa sector. But here I, I'd like to, to, to give you a quote that was given to me by, uh, by a cocoa producer in one of my first uh, encounters with, uh, with a cocoa producer, with a cocoa producer. And he said in, in, in French, estomac famé n'a pas d'oreille. And so in, in English, it means that a hungry stomach doesn't have any ears. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and that is, Exactly what I mean with poverty is at the root and we need to be able to solve that if we want to, to really propose solutions that work on the other challenges. Because the reality for, for a cocoa household today is that it's, it's a daily struggle to put food on the table and to put all your kids at school. Uh, mm. and as long as that is a struggle, uh, there's little room um for other actions and specifically actions that are linked to sustainability targets. So we need to address that. The fourth and last one would be transparency in the sector, but that is also a more general one. Yeah. I mean, I think it was interesting, um, your point about, well, the fact that if you have a hungry stomach, it's very, there's very little room for anything else. Um, and it, it was interesting because with Food Unfolded last week, um, we had covered a fair trade campaign that uh, I'm sure you're aware of, Charles. And we had some of our community, they had asked us, you know, oh, well, is fair trade more sustainable for the environment? Like, should I even buy this if it's shipped all the way from another continent, you know? Because this has been on the forefront of many people's minds in terms of environmental sustainability. Um, but it's 
a difficult conversation. I remember engaging with uh, some of our followers and saying that, but ultimately it's, it's your decision, huh? But um, it's, it's not one or the other necessarily. And sometimes you have to bear in mind that um, in order to achieve environmental sustainability uh, in the long term, you also need to provide a financial sustainability. But of course, you also have, well, you can't necessarily have financial sustainability if you don't have environmental sustainability. But I think that's a very important point um, that maybe a lot of conscious consumers, we tend to forget about. No, and I do, I, I, I do agree and I understand the tension. And, and I think that it's great that, that this conversation is taking place. And, and mm -hmm. just like you say, everyone should make his own choices, uh, especially if you're, uh, I think it's already great to be conscious about it and to think about it. And indeed, you might decide that for you, one, one of the options of, of uh, because here we're talking about reducing your environmental footprint. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the options might be to, you know, to focus strictly on, on, on local ingredients. Um, it's probably a huge challenge, mm -hmm. uh, but um, it might be the best solution for some, for some amongst us. And, and I think we, we need to respect that. On the other hand, and, and that's a bit of the point that I'm, I was making earlier. Um, trade is, is really a powerful tool for development, uh, yeah. or a catalyst. Um, and I'm sure that, that, that we've all had these history lessons when we were kids. Uh, where, you know, we, we talked about the, the golden era of this or that city, you know, and, and I remember very vividly the golden era of the, uh, the Belgian, uh, city of Bruges. Uh, and that golden era actually is associated with, uh, with really good trade at mm. that point. Um, and so there you see that trade is really through, the history of mankind has been a tool for development. Uh, mm. Now, the thing is, we need to look at the quality of that development. Is it the development that we want or not? Um, but my point here would be, don't blame the tool, <laughs> but mm. look at the results. I guess maybe diving in more to, because these are kind of the misconceptions, I think that was actually in my next question, which was, what are some misconceptions people might have about the cocoa industry and its challenges? It's it's to me probably your most difficult question because I'm in it uh, and and I know mm -hmm. that I've, I've, I tend to uh, to again to talk about this with a lot of of, uh, of my friends and and family members so I think that the misconceptions I've probably tried to to manage them in my in my close circle mm -hmm. um, but if I if I can pick one uh, that 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 comes back sometimes is that nothing is being done or that nothing has been done in the past. I think mm. if, if you look at, at the cocoa industry, uh, definitely in recent years, it, it has been one of the most proactive uh, sectors. Uh, I'm not speaking about impact and results. I'm, I'm really talking about, you know, unlocking investments, developing programs, trying new things, um, mm. investing in research to better understand what, what can be done. Uh, and, and what results can be achieved, what cannot be done and what is needed. And so here, um, I think the, 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 the good thing with Coco is that there is a lot of movement. Um, I think that the, the, the less good side of this is that sometimes there's a, there might be a lack of direction, um, because mm -hmm. the challenges are so huge. Um, there is no simple solution to a complex problem. And so th there's still a lot to be discovered, uncovered, and a lot to be done before we can really speak of a, a situation that is acceptable or ideal. Um, but there is already a lot of dynamism, a lot of movement, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of investments also. Um, and so I think that, that this is really, again, at the essence of Beyond Chocolate. Um, what we aim to do is, is, really in Belgium with this program, bring all stakeholders together to, mm -hmm. you know, to put all the pieces of the puzzle on the table so that we can um, get a good look at it, identify gaps, see what works, what doesn't work, uh, what are the conditions, what are the conditions to, uh, to make some strategies work or fail. Uh, there's a lot that we need to learn. Uh, and here, um, what, what is important with Beyond Chocolate is that we try to do this in an inclusive way. Mm, that was actually uh, so my we, next question. <laughs> yeah, well, it is important um, mm. because I think, and, and these are two, um, 
you know two sentences that 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 come back often if you if you read about coco or or if you're interested in the sector you will mm-hmm. see uh that no no actor alone can make the difference that's one and the second one that there is no silver bullet there is no simple solution and there is no one size fits all um and so taking these two these two points in consideration what we wanted to do with beyond chocolate is really uh you know start working as a convener and bringing all these expertise and all these views and 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 all these points together and so today in beyond chocolate you have actually uh coalitions that are starting to to be created that that regroup uh you know the the traders with the retail with civil society organizations that decide to work directly together with uh with one or or more cooperatives to you know to try to level up our strategies our impact models Mm-hmm. Uh, with the ambition to deliver results again um we're a proud belgium chocolate country right mm-hmm. uh and here uh i like to just grab a quote from from spider-man <laughs> but with great great chocolate comes great responsibility uh mm-hmm. and and i think that this is really what the sector in belgium um wants to do uh, we we really want to uh yeah to 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 associate the the quality and reputation of Belgian chocolate with sustainability uh, yeah. and so we have high ambitions for that but are also realistic uh, the challenges are rough and so there's a lot yeah. to be done but at the same time doesn't Belgium also source most of its chocolate from for example Latin America where you know you have more niche kind of cocoa producers that kind of focuses more on like the quality of the way that it's grown. There seems to be a difference in cocoa production and where it's sourced from. Exactly. And that's also something that is probably not not known too much. Um, but so um, the origins of cocoa are definitely in, in, in Latin America. Mm. Uh, and um, when you look at the market today, actually, there's two countries that produce uh, two-thirds of, of the cocoa uh, in terms of global volume. And that's Côte d'Ivoire and Ghana, so mm. n- not so close to Latin America. Uh, if you zoom out a little bit, you'll see that three-quarters of the cocoa that is produced globally comes from Western Africa in general. So you add Nigeria and Liberia and Cameroon there, and there you have the big cocoa producers uh, on, on this planet. Latin America still is an important uh, an important supplier of cocoa, but but indeed you can see big differences both in 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 the production as in the product, uh, the end product. And indeed, what you've experienced is um, like you say uh, is more niche, and and where actually you you are in a, in a market segment uh, where the 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 tasting of cocoa and chocolate is much more close to winery. And so indeed, yeah. you can start associating different tastes, and and that has to do, of course, on 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 one hand with the bean and the the, the genetics of of your cocoa plant, mm. uh, and of course the craftsmanship. Uh, on the other side of uh, of the of the cocoa belt, uh, you've got West Africa, and there what you'll see uh, is uh, actually it's another market segment. What you have in West Africa is the the big volumes, as I've said. Um, and so that's a totally different market uh, segment as um, actually they respond to different needs. Uh, when I look around and, and, and I invite everyone to do the same, just go through your supermarket and start listing all products where you can find a little bit of cocoa or chocolate. You'll see an, an, a gigantic variety of products where there might be one or two percentages of, of cocoa or chocolate in it. Um, but so there's also a big demand on the market. Uh, today for cocoa that is not specifically uh, investing in a specific quality or or type of type of taste but um, that's a, a, a segment and again it's our addiction to cocoa it's a segment where you want to have big stable volumes that can guarantee that everyone has his uh, his doses of chocolate from time to time uh, and there what is important is again stability of volume and stability of taste not so much the the quality part. And so you'll see big differences in the production. Uh, In West Africa, uh, you'll have one or two varieties of cocoa. Uh, When you go to Latin America, I know of cooperatives where they are actually investing in seed banks to try to, you know, work on the conservation of cocoa genetics to Mm. be able to, to, you know, to respond to the need of these niche markets. Um, But that's also 
it comes back to the to the there's no one size fits all solution because there is no one cocoa market when we talk about chocolate we think about the chocolate tablets and maybe the pralines and and you know this craftsmanship the reality is that there's cocoa in a lot of products around us and that maybe and and maybe that's something that we need to be more conscious about i think we don't even realize how much chocolate we have in our in our kitchens and supermarkets but it's everywhere Mm. Uh, yeah, and like again protein bars or something it's not just chocolate bars yeah and it's not necessarily bad uh, again it can be a powerful tool for development and and if we mm. manage to 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 develop that aspect i think we can can really create a strong movement on on that market segment as well i think maybe i'd like to elaborate a bit on the point there that it could could potentially be this tool to kind of raise people out of poverty because I know we also had this conversation before um, but you know there's been a lot of investment made over the last few decades and has there really been much of a much of a change you know for the people that are actually living in Ghana or Cotiva you know like has it really done anything or are we kind of just dabbling around and it, you know Mm -hmm. just hasn't really helped at all no it's it's um it's important to bring nuance in 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 a response uh, to this question because there's indeed a lot that has been done uh, mm -hmm. and the reality is that some strategies or some projects might have better results than others mm -hmm. um, now also it is important to be very clear uh, when we look at the the top line indicators uh, let's come back to the challenges and let's look at income deforestation and rates of child labor uh, these indicators cannot be turned to green right now uh, i think we need to be very clear about that uh, the the evolution over the last decades has probably been probably been negative if you look at these indicators deforestation has not stopped child labor and and specifically also uh, with such a uh, with such a, a crisis as today uh, mm. we know uh, that 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 there's issues uh, on on that challenge as well and so um if you look at 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 the top line indicators we're not where we would like to be of course um as a society i mean as a whole huh? um mm. it's true for cocoa but it's true for many other things um now what i also want to say this doesn't mean that we need to throw everything away everything that has been done uh and so that's why i i really believe in 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 this constructivism or constructive approach let's bring everything together uh, and have this discussion together um, because we know that 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 different actors have different parts of the response that need to be to be given and here i want to also include the governments uh, here we're lucky in belgium to have an investment from the belgian government in such an initiative that is also triggering companies to take action um, but we need to also develop ways to to support local governments you know uh to uh, to also in, invest in sustainable development of of their cocoa sectors let's be clear about this cocoa is an important economic facet uh of Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana uh it is uh it is a particularly important commodity to generate their incomes and the incomes mm -hmm. that that this sector can generate for these two countries uh can then be reinvested uh, in its people. That's, of course, the ideal situation. Um, but that is, that is the reason why I believe that we need to be able to put everyone at the table so that we can empower every actor in his own function to take this extra action because we need extra action. That is clear. Yeah, I, I do see your point there. And I do know that, um, like, I think it was a few months ago, or at least I've seen an article about uh, Cote d'Ivoire, the government um, had made it a, a minimum premium that needs to be paid on top of all of the cocoa that's purchased from its producers. Um, and I think that's a great initiative. And it's like, this is exactly the kinds of initiatives that we need from government. But at the same time, if that's not followed through by, you know, companies, big companies that are pur purchasing this cocoa um, from these regions, 
you know, you see, for example, with fair trade, I know that they had increased their minimum price um, by a little bit. You know, the the farmers had felt, look, this isn't enough for us. We really need a higher minimum price, and they had an eleven percent drop in uh, volume sales. You know, and I think, of course, it's complicated, especially with trade and product and profit and profit margins, and it's it's difficult. But at the same time. This is maybe maybe more of a personal opinion than anything. That I do think that、um, certain actors also do need to step up, you know, and really commit.、Um, especially, and I think this is actually adding to your point, if anything, because if the government does this, but then the companies don't follow through with supporting that, then in the end, it doesn't actually help raise up ev- everybody and all the actors with- involved in that cocoa supply chain.、Um, but it's just there's this sense. And I think many consumers also perhaps feel it because many of our followers have also mentioned, well, is it not just greenwashing? You know, are these companies really concerned about child exploitation? Are they really concerned about deforestation, or is it just kind of something nice, a little label that they they put on, you know, their packaging? Or are they actually trying to do anything and change things? Because the general sense is that you know when you see an eleven percent drop in sales because the minimum price has increased, it feels as if well then these companies aren't really committing you know and that it feels as if the profit is、uh, taking precedence over、um, you know more I guess no I understand I understand your yeah definitely I understand your point and and and. And this discussion, and and there's a lot, there's a lot of of elements in there that are true. And here again,、um, I think that's why we want to bring everything, at, everyone at the table,、uh, and not、mm-hmm. only companies and governments.、Uh, I think, for example, civil society actors have a have an important role to to play in there.、Uh, I would like also to bring in、uh, producers and producer organizations because,、yeah. uh, in in. Huh, Let's say producers are entrepreneurs.、Huh? They're not so much different from uh, uh, from entrepreneurs on on in other countries in the world. They they want to they have a business and they want their business to succeed to be able to invest in their kids. Very logical. There's nothing nothing much different about that、uh, between a cocoa producer and me, for example.、Um, uh, except that probably the, the cocoa producer will be more creative in 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 you know、uh, reshaping its business model to to make sure that 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 he gets the best out of it, even if the best is is far from sufficient、uh, today.、Mm-hmm. So we need to bring、uh, we need to bring everyone into this story.、Um, but here also,、um, I think it's it's also Today, very easy to become cynical, and and I, I need to admit also I have my cynical moments, and 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 you know it helps to to identify critical points also, but it doesn't help to move forward.、Um, mm. Cynicism doesn't do that. It has great value, and I love it, but it doesn't help to move forward.、Uh, and so here, I'd like to challenge the idea a bit that、uh, that. The companies are,、uh, you know, stepping back because of an because of a small increase in price.、Um, that is the case, but maybe as consumers, we have a role in there to play as well. Maybe、to、they are stepping back because、mm-hmm. consume because because consumers are not willing to, or because companies believe consumers are not willing to、uh, to move together with them. It's、mm-hmm. just more complicated than that. Also, in in. It's um, it's a, cocoa in particular is a very very competitive market, and so here also the reality、um, is that you know taking a huge step in terms of of sustainability generally comes with a cost, right? Yeah.、Um, the thing is that as a company, if you want to survive in in the economic models that we have today, you need to be able to to. To you know, to have an economic model that is viable,、uh, mm-hmm. and here in a highly competitive market, it's very difficult to take a giant leap forward if you don't have the confidence that your competitors will not take a step back,、mm-hmm. because if they do, you you are actually pricing yourself out of the market. And so here again,、uh, this is to me.、Um, Uh, uh, um, a very valid reason to try to to create that famous level playing field that 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 is that is a buzzword now,、um, mm. but that level playing field actually to say it in in a very simplistic way should allow to you know at the same time raise the floor and raise the ceiling, 
you know, creating a zone where actually the champions that want to take steps forward are enabled to do so. Also because they have the assurance that their competitors cannot lower the bar on the other hand. Mm -hmm. And so there you can try to create this positive movement um, that step by step moves toward our ambition. But to do that, we need to be in this together. Do you feel um, for everybody that you've kind of been in contact with, Charles, that there has been an overall sense that we really do want to actually change things? Because I think that you see something that perhaps a lot of consumers don't normally see. You know, you interact with stakeholders that are within the cocoa industry. And I don't know, I think because there's this disconnect for consumers also to um, this chain, I think that it's... It would be interesting to hear your perspective on, as somebody who has interacted with all these stakeholders, whether you really feel that there's this sense that, you know, there is change coming, like people are really trying to work um, together to find solutions. I think so. I'm, 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 today I'm blessed with Beyond Chocolate to have this, uh, this partnership where stakeholders are active. They are participating in, in, in meetings, sharing experiences, uh, developing new projects and new approaches, testing new approaches to see if they can innovate also to, uh, to trigger more results. So I, I, I'm indeed, I'm blessed with an, an, an active group of stakeholders. Uh, and actually that already, you know, triggers dynamism on the market with new products appearing on the shelves in Belgium that, that indeed raise the bar and, and, and aim at, 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 you know, um, delivering much more impact uh, for cocoa producers and for, uh, for, uh, for environment. So definitely mm -hmm. there is, there is movement. Um, and, and, and we need to, we need to be able to support that. And so, so it's important to, um, to see that as well. Now I understand um, that this might not uh, not be visible yet. Also, it's it's um, this new dynamism on, on the Belgian market is relatively young, uh, but it is strong. Uh, and so uh, so I am confident that that we are moving uh, that we are moving in 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 any sense. Um, now I'd like also to to maybe you know. Um, Turn the thing around, turn your question around. Uh, mm. and I'm, I'm pretty sure that you'll find very little people that are ready to commit to sell or buy a product that is actually supporting child labor or deforestation. Mm. I, I have never met someone, uh, that, that is actually, uh, openly supportive of, of having, having, uh, you know, a product that, that, that yeah. breaks, uh, that, 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 that actually, uh, um, is an infraction to human rights or environmental rights. So that is also true. Uh, and what I see in, in, in a wide variety of stakeholders around me is that there's, there's indeed an acceptance of the, of the urgency and acceptance of the need to implement new strategies and, and to be bold. Um, also, um, I think there's acceptance that we don't know enough right now. Uh, and definitely that, that we need smart mixes of interventions just intervening on on one or another aspect uh will never be sufficient and so um this discussion is is going much more into detail in the last uh, in the last years uh, and, and i think that's a very good sign so my hope is that with the work that can be done on coco and on this lovely project that chocolate is is mm. that we can hopefully you know start sharing learnings also uh with other sectors and other commodities because um the challenges are of course not limited to cocoa definitely and actually i was just wanted to go back to your uh point about like cocoa really being this commodity that could help um kind of not be the solution to issues, but be part of the change uh, to bring and uplift um, these people out of poverty. Um, because one, one, I do remember a comment. I'm just bringing this up because it's so fresh from our fair trade Instagram campaign last week. But one of our followers had also mentioned, well, you know, the problem is that a lot of these farmers don't know the true value of what they're, it is that they're producing. Um, and do you think that that's actually the case? Because I think that um, perhaps, again, we sometimes kind of picture these producers and farmers as maybe 
like, ah, oh, well, they, they actually don't know, um, how much their cocoa is really worth because maybe they've never even tasted chocolate or they don't see how much the world loves chocolate or like in the West or something like that. But I think that, I don't know, from the sounds of it, that might actually be maybe more ignorant, um, to, to believe that because it sounds like these producers actually know much more than what we think that they actually know. Um, if that makes I'm sense. happy you say that. No, I'm happy you say that because, um, you know, I, I think we need we need to to also look at ourselves, um, indeed, uh, in in all sectors, not only in commercial sectors, but also uh, in the nonprofit where I where, I, where I've worked for the for the whole of my my life now, right? Um, but indeed, that might be a good misconception to to list as well. Um, I would hear try to make the point that we should avoid the infantilization of producers. Mm. Um, you know, most of the time, the, again, they are entrepreneurs. They, they know what they do. They generally know why they invest or why they do not invest. Uh, and so, um, I try to, to, to always remain humble, uh, in, in that, in, in relations with many different types of stakeholders uh, and try to, you know, take a positioning of will, a willingness to learn from the other ones and from mm. the reality of their context and their needs. And so what you see there is indeed uh, cocoa producers. It is true that, that, that often chocolate doesn't manage to come back uh, under that form to cocoa producers. Um, but I would not say that, that they do not know the value of chocolate. I would not say that they do not know that this is an important sector. Uh, when you speak about, about, uh, I think it's about 6 million people in Côte d'Ivoire that are working in that sector. You know, it would mm. be really weird that they don't know that it's an important sector for the global market. Um, mm. you know, 6 million people working in it. Again, that's, uh, that's really a lot. Uh, and, and also, um, you'd be surprised also by the, the level of, of creativity, but also of, of efficiency of, of the investments and the directions that they want to take as entrepreneurs again, mm. uh, and solutions that, that, um, that might come up from producers might not always appear to make sense to us, but this is where I think we need to learn to be humble. Uh, mm. and stop the infantilization of producers. Um, I would love to see the, the situation evolve where, where producers indeed, through better income, are empowered to, uh, to make choices um, today. And I'll come back to the estomac affamé, uh, the hungry stomach. Uh, today, the reality is that there's little choice available for producers. Cocoa is called a cash crop. Today, it is the crop that makes most sense uh, to cultivate because it is the one that, that, that brings cash. Uh, even though it is not sufficient cash, uh, even though there's huge challenges, but we need to look at the bigger picture. Um, and so probably the choice of cocoa is the best choice today in that given context. Mm. Uh, and, and I'm not placed to say what a producer should invest or not invest in. Uh, I think we need to try to evolve towards a situation where they are empowered to make choices. And here I have a firm belief also that people, uh, and, and myself coming from, from a family with a lot of, uh, a lot of farms and, and agriculture, um, you know, I, I firmly believe that farmers uh, want to take care of, uh, of, of the ground that, that, you know, that, that, mm. that gives them work and, and, and that allows to, to cultivate products. Um, the reality again is that, uh, a hungry stomach doesn't have any ears. And so you cannot, uh, force sustainability to be a priority, um, as long, um, as the context, uh, is not favorable for that. If you ask a cocoa producer today, uh, what can we do to, uh, to help you move towards this situation of, uh, of a living income? Mm -hmm. Uh, the honest response will be buy my cocoa and, and buy my cocoa at a, at a good price so that I can start investing in, uh, you know, in, in, in sustainability, in sustainable cocoa or in other, uh, income generating, uh, projects. And so, mm -hmm. yes, um, I think we should, 
there's no there's no simple response to that and yes yeah. definitely there's there's different programs that are looking into that and 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 looking how we can create a supportive context for for diversification of income um, because mm. there also i think it's one element of the response that we definitely need to look at uh, but mm-hmm. also that won't, will not be sufficient on its own and then in terms of i guess uh, other initiatives that beyond chocolate is part of um could you maybe share some that, you know, have been maybe successful? And I put successful in quotes mm-hmm. because, you know, I think success is kind of difficult to, uh, I guess, qualify <laughs> um, yeah. because it depends how you look at it. Huh? I would say successful in the sense that um, that 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 uh, the the impact models that are implemented uh, are an upgrade. Uh, of what has been done before and so i think uh, with beyond chocolate indeed we are lucky to have a lot of uh, of active stakeholders and so they bring a lot of expertise and and uh and strategies on the table that we can then discuss and evaluate and see how how they can how they can build on each other uh and with this program also uh the belgian government has created a fund to co-finance projects uh, that mm-hmm. aim at realizing the ambition uh, of beyond chocolate faster and aims at you know developing business models that we can upscale and so uh today there's nine uh projects that are co-financed uh and these are really projects that are focusing on the cocoa uh, value chain and 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 indeed on uh raising the income ending deforestation and ending child labor, but also taking into account that this is a process uh, and that we need to to be able to evolve step by step with Mm. a coalition of partners that makes sense. Um, And so uh, definitely there's a couple of interesting projects. I would label them as successful in the sense that they are truly innovating and that that uh, and that definitely some of these commercial partners have decided to step up their game and to, you know, to 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 develop expertise and and at some point also take risks because for a company innovating and innovating in sustainability uh, is also a risk um, and mm. so uh, we have now nine pilot projects uh, with companies that are willing to take risks to actually um, you know um, support this transition of the sector that uh, that we are aiming for That's so really we have champions yeah <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Is there anything remaining that you would like to share, Charles, maybe for uh, yeah, our audience? Yeah, eat chocolate. Uh, I think it's uh, <laughs> it, it's it's a good way to 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 end this conversation. To me, um, you know, I've been lucky enough to to be able uh, to to have some good discussions and and even develop friendships with uh, with a couple of cocoa producers, mm-hmm. uh, and this helps me a lot today in my job. Um, and uh, and here again, I'd like to stress if um, if you'd like to make a difference in the life of cocoa producers as a consumer, um, this is a great excuse to to just put your mouth full of chocolate. Um, <laughs> But then also, um, as a consumer, be, be conscious of your role and mm. dig deeper. Uh, I think there are products now, uh, on the shelves in, in almost every supermarket, uh, that, that, that are, um, you know, that are going, uh, a step further that, that really already speak of living incomes and of raising yeah. the bar and, and of going, uh, going one step ahead. And, and these, uh, these products actually are a great tool for development and and as a consumer if you buy these products you're actually also supporting the initiative of of the company that is that is showing their willingness to move forward and so um here really um i think it's 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 time to you know to make our concept of uh of development and and aid evolve Mm. uh and that we need to empower uh, and not aid, uh, and and this you can yeah, do uh, by having great trade relations, um, and yeah, th- basically that's it, uh, and that works for cocoa producers, but it also works for for the the bakery next doors or or, or the farmer that is farming a few kilometers away from here. Uh, if you want to, as a consumer, to make a difference, get informed, ask questions, ask tricky questions, allow yourself to fail sometimes. It's okay. 
you know there's <laughs> there's nothing in this world is perfect and i think that's okay too um but what we want to do is have movement and dynamism um and that's um that's the only thing that would be unacceptable to me is a status quo uh, mm. and so as long as there's movement um there's something that we can work with uh, to move forward yeah so eat chocolate be part <laughs> of that movement <laughs> huh maybe i should go buy some today <laughs> i have my secret stash such as most people uh